conclusion of red gauntlet by sir walter scott this LibriVox recording is in the public domain recording by dion gines salt lake city utah conclusion by dr dry as dust in a letter to the author of waverley i am truly sorry my worthy and much respected sir that my anxious researches have neither in the form of letters nor of diaries or other memoranda been able to discover more than i have hitherto transmitted of the history of the red gauntlet family but i observe in an old newspaper called the whitehall gazette of which i fortunately possess a file for several years that sir arthur darcy redgauntlet was presented to his late majesty at the drawing-room by lieutenant-general campbell upon which the editor observes in the way of comment that we were going remus atque velas into the interests of the pretender since a scot had presented a jacobite at court i am sorry i have not room the frank being only unseal for his further observations tending to show the apprehensions entertained by many well instructed persons of the period that the young king might himself be induced to become one of the stuarts faction a catastrophe from which it has pleased heaven to preserve these kingdoms i perceive also by a marriage contract in the family repositories that miss lilius redgauntlet of redgauntlet about eighteen months after the transactions you have commemorated intermarried with allan fairford esq advocate of clinkdollar who i think we may not unreasonably conclude to be the same person whose name occurs so frequently in the pages of your narration in my last excursion to edinburgh i was fortunate enough to discover an old caddy from whom at the expense of a bottle of whisky and half a pound of tobacco i extracted the important information that he knew peter peebles very well and had drunk many a muchkin with him in caddy fraser's time he said that he lived ten years after king george's accession in the momentary expectation of winning his cause every day in the session time and every hour in the day and at last fell down dead in what my informer called a perplexity fit upon a proposal for a composition being made to him in the outer house i have chosen to retain my informer's phrase not being able justly to determine whether it is a corruption of the word apoplexy as my friend mr oldbuck supposes or the name of some peculiar disorder incidental to those who have concern in the courts of law as many callings and conditions of men have diseases appropriate to themselves the same caddy also remembered blind willie stevenson who was called wandering willie and who ended his days uncobinely in sir arthur redgauntlet's hall nook he had done the family some good turn he said specially when one of the argyle gentlemen was coming down on a wheen of them that had the old leaven about them and would have taken every man of them and no less nor headed and hanged them but willie and a friend they had called robin the rambler gave them warning by playing tunes such as the campbells are coming and the like whereby they got timeous warning to take the wing i need not point out to your acuteness my worthy sir that this seems to refer to some inaccurate account of the transactions in which you seem so much interested respecting red gauntlet about whose subsequent history you are more particularly inquisitive i have learned from an excellent person who was a priest in the scottish 
monastery of Ratisbon before its suppression that he remained for two or three years in the family of the chevalier and only left it at last in consequence of some discords in that melancholy household as he had hinted to general campbell he exchanged his residence for the cloister and displayed in the latter part of his life a strong sense of the duties of religion which in his earlier days he had too much neglected being altogether engaged in political speculations and intrigues he rose to the situation of prior in the house which he belonged to and which was of a very strict order of religion he sometimes received his countrymen whom accident brought to ratisbon and curiosity induced to visit the monastery of but it was remarked that though he listened with interest and attention when britain or particularly scotland became the subject of conversation yet he never either introduced or prolonged the subject never used the english language never inquired about english affairs and above all never mentioned his own family his strict observation of the rules of his order gave him at the time of his death some pretensions to be chosen a saint and the brethren of the monastery of made great efforts for that effect and brought forward some plausible proofs of miracles but there was a circumstance which threw a doubt over the subject and prevented the consistory from acceding to the wishes of the worthy brethren under his habit and secured in a small silver box he had worn perpetually around his neck a lock of hair which the fathers avouched to be a relic but the avocado del diabolo in combating as was his official duty the pretensions of the candidate for sanctity made it at least equally probable that the supposed relic was taken from the head of a brother of the deceased prior who had been executed for adherence to the stuart family in seventeen forty five to six and the motto had oblivicendum seemed to intimate a tone of mundane feeling and recollection of injuries which made it at least doubtful whether even in the quiet and gloom of the cloister father hugo had forgotten the sufferings and injuries of the house of red gauntlet june tenth eighteen twenty four end of conclusion end of red gauntlet by sir walter scott